What's up gamers, Backbone 1 is probably the most recognizable and popular mobile gaming controller on the market. Earlier this year, Backbone quietly released version 2, a subtle revamp with one big improvement. Let's get into it. The Backbone 1 kind of looks like a dog bone. I wonder if that's how they got the name. I want to start off talking about triggers and bumpers because I like them a lot more than I thought I would. These bumpers actually feel really nice. They have a satisfyingly soft but tactile click to them that I really love. The triggers are analog and that is great for games that register a range of input like some racing games or Spider-Man 2. They are super quiet with this light as a feather resistance but lightning quick bounce back. My only complaint about them is that sometimes Sometimes the travel distance feels a little too short for analog triggers, but it wasn't too difficult for me to adjust to that. The D-pad feels pretty good too. It's not my favorite. I found diagonals took some getting used to. We have rubber membrane connections here. It's fairly quiet and responsive, but it just doesn't have that classic D-pad feel that I grew up with. But that's okay. For most gaming experiences, it'll get the job done and is far from the worst D-pad I've used. The joysticks are short. They don't travel very far. They're very reminiscent of Joy-Con sticks. And while I would prefer full-size sticks like the Nacon MGX Pro has, I don't mind playing with these. They seem very accurate and my thumbs don't slip off of them and that's a huge plus. They have a solid L3 and R3 click. There's not much to complain about here. This is the PlayStation version of the Backbone 1 and the face buttons reflect that by being marked with square, circle, cross, and triangle. These have clicky dome style switches and I'm not a huge fan of those but they aren't very loud or obnoxious like others I've used and the more I played the more I forgot about them. In fact I actually kind of like them now. I do wish they were a little bigger. They're kind of small and close together, so if you have bigger thumbs, you might struggle here a bit. If you like how things are sounding so far, I have an affiliate link in the description. Clicking that link and purchasing anything at all really helps out the channel at no additional cost to you, and I thank you for your support. But speaking of the PlayStation side of things for a moment, I have to compliment PlayStation Remote Play. It worked so well with this device. I played some Spider-Man 2, Arkham Knight, and several other games. They all worked really well. It was great, and it didn't even make my phone warm at all. And I barely drained my battery. It was absolutely amazing, and it made me wonder why anyone would choose a PlayStation Portal over something like this. But again, I have one complaint, and I feel like this was a very strange oversight to make, especially when you partner with Sony to make this control and that's that there's no PlayStation button. The peachy colored backbone button doesn't function as the PlayStation button. So the only way to exit a game is to tap the screen, then tap the three dots in the bottom right corner, then tap the screen again to dismiss the overlay, and then arrow down to the home icon and hit the cross button. And for some reason, I find that incredibly frustrating that there are all these steps that cause me to adjust my grip and use touch controls when there are really two buttons down here that don't get used and could be remapped. One is this screenshot button that takes screenshots of your phone and the other is the backbone button. More on that backbone button in a minute because I have one more bone to pick with it but I want to get back to some positives for a bit. I have to admit that I was initially apprehensive about reviewing this controller because I had seen reviews and pictures of version 1 and knew that that version wasn't a good fit for newer larger iPhones. I was nervous that the awkward fit would put too much stress on the USB-C port on my iPhone 15 Pro Max and could potentially mess it up. But I decided to order one anyway when they were on sale a few weeks back and that's when I discovered that they had made some changes. This whole middle area has been redesigned to fit larger phones. Now I need to make a correction. In my unboxing video, I said that my phone still didn't fit with the case on, and that was incorrect. I have to give a shout out to my pal Thomas for helping me figure that out in the comments. The controller comes with these adapters for different size phones, and two of them are installed at the factory. I had tried to remove them when I first opened the box, but they wouldn't budge. I mean, it felt like they were glued down, and I didn't want to tear up the 
controller, so I left them in. But with them in there, I had to take my phone case off, and I really didn't want to do that every time I wanted to play a game, so I was pretty disappointed. But then, upon further investigation, Thomas helped me realize that they were removable. They use magnets to stay in place, and they have these little nubs to keep them from sliding out of place. They're really well designed, and now that I know how to remove them, I feel like an idiot for missing it before. So thank you, Thomas. I can now happily play with my case still on. I actually removed both adapters and feel like my phone fits perfectly in this controller. I'm very pleased with the way this is designed now, and that change is honestly the one big difference between version 1 and version 2. Thanks, Backbone. Good job. For those that still want to use a wired headset, there's also a 3.5mm audio jack on the bottom of the left handle. And speaking of the handles, I should mention that this is way more comfortable than it looks. I expected it to feel a lot smaller, but I really enjoyed playing even for longer play sessions with no hand cramps. Finally, there is a USB-C pass-through charging port on the bottom of the right handle, and that's great for when you need to charge and want to play at the same time. But that's that's not its only function, which brings me back to the backbone button. I understand that companies need to make money, but this button's only purpose is to take you to the backbone app on your phone so that they can ask you to subscribe to their app services. To be fair, you don't have to install the app at all. This is plug and play, but the only way to get firmware updates, which are free, is to download the app. Now, I'm sure that the app is nice. It's supposed to act as a hub for all of your games from various gaming sources. But when have you ever spent $100 on a controller only to find that there's a monthly subscription fee to unlock all of its features? I mean, what is this, Google Stadia? And I may... <laughs> And to make it even more shady, the price is not listed anywhere on their website. I looked multiple times on multiple days. It's either not there or they've buried it so deep because they don't want you to find it. I think it's $3.99 a month, but all I know for sure from their website is that it comes with a free trial. That part is plastered everywhere. But here's the kicker. You remember this nice little USB-C port with the pass-through charging? Well, you can use that to form a wired connection so you can play games on other devices like an iPad or your PC or Mac with your new shiny $100 controller. But only if you unlock that feature by paying the subscription. And that just seems wrong. It's not like the hardware isn't capable. The feature is built into the device that you now own, but you have to pay rent to use it. Okay. Okay, rant is over, but I feel a moral obligation to inform you of that because they're trying to sneak it past you. By the way, if you're looking for a free lifetime subscription, go ahead and subscribe to Bonos Gaming. It won't cost you a dime. The backbone subscription aside, all my other nitpicks are pretty minor, and I have truly, thoroughly enjoyed playing Apple Arcade, Xbox Remote Play, and PlayStation Remote Play with this controller, and I think it's a good choice at $100, and a great choice if it's on sale for $75 or less. It's lightweight, it's comfortable to hold, it fits large phones with cases still on, and the controls are mostly excellent. So if you want to try it out for yourself, please consider the affiliate link below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. It's viewers like you that motivate me to keep the content coming. Stay kind and encouraging out there, and I'll catch you on the Flippity Flip.